Welcome to County Report this week. I'm Lorna Vigeli. Thank you for joining us. When the rates went up, the lights went down. That was the feeling in Annapolis when the Montgomery County Legislative Delegation and County Executive I. Leggett met to unveil a customer relations survey that will support legislation focused to improve the quality of service from PEPCO. Nearly 12,000 Montgomery County residents and businesses responded to the customer relations survey conducted by Leggett's appointed PEPCO work group. Almost 95% responded that they had experienced at least one power outage of more than five hours in the last year. This is a wake-up call for the entire state. This is not fun and game for us in Montgomery County. This is real, real impact in terms of the quality of life of people, whether it's their businesses, whether it's the elderly, people who are sick on respirators. This is a real problem. The findings reported by PEPCO customers was announced in Annapolis by Leggett, and with the support of the Montgomery County delegation, they hope it can strengthen House Bill 391 that would allow the Maryland Public Service Commission to impose penalties to the company if it fails to meet service quality and reliability standards. It's about people having to spend thousands for generators. Um, we're talking about tens of millions of dollars in lost economic activity. So this is an important, important I I issue. It is uh, one that our constituents have, are looking to this legislature for help. It's an unacceptable situation. We have legislation in front of us that I th think does present an opportunity uh, for us to, to move forward and respond to our constituents. According to the survey, the economic impact of loan outages experienced last year might have cost residents up to $114 million and another $211 million to businesses. Montgomery County has taken leadership in the metropolitan region implementing the pay by cell phone parking service in its parking lots, garages and street meters. In a media event with Montgomery County Executive Ike Leggett and Transportation Director Art Holmes, the county announced that pay by cell is fully implemented in Bethesda and by the summer it will be available in the county's 11,000 parking meters in Silver Spring, Wheaton, North Bethesda and Montgomery Hills. Users can extend parking time remotely, view transactions online, and pay only for the time used. MobileNow is the county's contractor for the pay-by-sell program that brought the technology to Montgomery County. Since launching the pilot in this very garage more than a year ago, as you heard, 110,000 parking sessions have taken place here in this region. And we believe that given the innovative spirit of the county should achieve the highest adoption rates for cell phone parking in the country. To register, visit www.mc.goparknow.com or call 301-830-7074. County Chamber of Commerce business representatives were on hand at this week's council session to discuss the impact of the economic downturn on local businesses. Susan Kennedy was there and she has a story. Susan? Lorna, there's no question the economic downturn has taken its toll on businesses here in Montgomery County. And some local business leaders were here today to speak to the council and they told them what they need to keep their doors open. And I thank you for, for allowing these local businesses to discuss with you the issues they are facing during these difficult economic times. They spoke of increased costs, their struggle to offer health benefits, and the transportation woes that are all too familiar to the ears of council members. We're challenged by the realities, and we do what we have to do to make sure that our businesses survive. Steve Silverman is the director of the county's Office of Economic Development. He says small business is big business here in Montgomery County. 95% of the 32,000 businesses in this county are 50 or less employees. Two-thirds of the 32,000 businesses are five or less employees. So even though all the attention and focus is always on the big players, the reality is that we have to have uh, support for our small business community and look at the policies and practices that we can impact. What we're hearing from the small business community is that things are not easy out there. They're doing their best. Uh, we've heard uh, they're facing a great difficulty. Health care costs, 
it's an important reminder to us as we, as the council tries to sort its way through how we treat government employees to hear what the, what's occurring in the private sector. In an effort to make this county more business friendly, council member Nancy Florine helped launch the Montgomery County Business Development Corporation. She says economic development is a long-term endeavor that needs to address local needs. The corporation is structured to get Montgomery back on the path to job growth and business expansion and to persuade businesses to stay in the county. The Business Development Corporation is, uh, uh, has just begun meeting uh, and is putting together its agenda. What is the kind of environment that we need to be creating to ensure that there's good private investment in Montgomery County and that we're not as, as dependent on the existence of the federal federal government as we have traditionally been. We need to create our own independent tax base. I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. This week, the council will hold its first in a series of five public hearings on the proposed operating budget. There are close to 40 speakers expected to testify at this first hearing, and as council president Valerie Irvin tells us, many have indicated they want to speak about the school's budget request for this year. I'm going to set the context for this conversation early on by talking about what's actually in the budget. And I think there's been a lot of misconceptions out there about how much we're actually cutting. There are no cuts. This is a proposed uh, budget from the uh, Board of Education. Um, Ike Leggett's budget is a proposed budget. The council is just beginning to hear from the public. We have a long way to go. So we're about seven weeks from the end game. And I just want to set the record straight for the public about what the MCPS budget actually has in it, uh, what's the proposal on the table, and um, I'm going to set that out for people um, right off the bat. County Executive Ike Lega released the Latino Youth Collaborative Steering Committee report regarding county Latino youth. Leggett had appointed the steering committee in 2009 to develop recommended strategies and action steps for addressing the educational, violence prevention, and well-being needs of Latino youth and their families. Among the recommendations to change existing voluntary withdrawal practices in the Montgomery County public school system. With the insight of the recommendations contained in the report, we will be able to make great strides in responding to the needs of a generation of Latino youth living here in Montgomery County. But it falls on each and every one of us to do whatever we can to find solutions to make it possible for our youth to feel engaged and supported. Leggett established a time-limited oversight work group to monitor progress in the implementation of the report's recommendations. It was all about transportation and federal funding at a Senate hearing in Washington, D.C. An executive legate testified before the Senate Committee on Environment and Public Works at a hearing entitled State and Local Perspectives on Transportation. Senators were seeking testimony from community leaders and transportation stakeholders on national, state, and local transportation priorities for the next Surface Transportation Authorization. Leggett discussed how essential federal funding is to ease traffic congestion in Montgomery County. When we come back, we'll take you to a remembrance gathering with Vietnam veterans. And big trucks are coming our way. Street spring cleaning is here. I'm Rockville 11's Bridget Breuer. Coming up next, we'll tell you about a family in Twinbrook who's going green in more ways than one. When County Report This Week continues. My dad is my hero. He goes into places people want to get away from. He makes everyone safe. But the best thing he can do is come home. The U.S. Fire Administration reminds you to protect yourself and firefighters. Have smoke alarms on every level and near sleeping areas. Test them monthly. Change batteries as instructed. Install sprinklers. Do your part to get out before firefighters have to come in. I understand you need a little help with your mortgage. Want to avoid foreclosure. Candy? Um, well, you know, you're in luck. We're uh, experts in this sort of thing. Mortgage, rigmarole, whatnot. Why don't we get a contract? Who wants a contract? Uh, I don't... Here you go, Pete. Thanks, Betty. Ride a toner. Excuse me. 
If you're facing foreclosure, talk to the right people. Speak with HUD-approved housing counselors free of charge at 888-995-HOPE. Welcome back to County Report this week. I'm Lorna Pagelli. April is Earth Month, and Rockville was just recently named as a contestant in the Green Power Community Challenge Contest, sponsored by the EPA. Rockville 11's Bridget Breuer finds out more about how businesses and residents in Rockville have contributed. Bridget? That's right. Rockville is now a contestant in the EPA's Green Power Community Challenge. We had the chance to check in with a family in Twinbrook to find out how easy it is to be sustainable. What do we do with this? Do we, we put it up? We push it up. There you go. And then Meet the Reed family of Twinbrook. They went solar in 2003, and their 1951 house is giving them green in more ways than one. The average uh, American household spends uh, around $1,200 a year uh, on uh, energy and uh, our our energy spend uh, is is probably around um, I'd say three hundred dollars three to four hundred dollars this is our whopping twenty two dollar and seventeen cent Pepco bill from um, January February whoa so that's a pretty typical bill we have for a Pepco bill. One of the factors that helped make the house more energy efficient was installing a programmable thermostat. After the house was prepped, it was time to go solar. Once you install the, the solar panels, um, they they do their their work every time the sun shines, and it's it's really gratifying to know that this house is on a sunny day, completely run through solar energy, completely run by the sun. Residents like the Reed family help contribute to making Rockville a strong contestant in the EPA's Green Power Community Challenge, an initiative Rockville's Green Chief Mark Charles says is good for the city. The reason why the mayor and council really endorse this is that it's really a no cost to the city. All the city staff is doing at this point is using its available resources to promote the program uh, and ask interested citizens and businesses to think about using green power as their menu of electricity options. They don't have to exclusively use green power, but they can supplement with as much green power as they want to. You can do that a couple of different ways. You can actually purchase green power on the grid from several providers that are listed on our website. Uh, you can also install your own solar system or a geothermal system here in Rockville, and, and a number of businesses and some homes have actually done that. To learn more about the city's Green Power Community Challenge, go online to rockvillemd.gov slash environment. Montgomery County's Commission for Veterans Affairs celebrated its second annual Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans Reunion. During the gathering, Montgomery County veterans shared their Vietnam War experiences and reflected on dealing with combat and injuries. Each one of these um, vets are going to tell their story of how they got to Vietnam, what they did there, and what they experienced when they came home. County Executive Ike Leggett, a Vietnam veteran himself, also shared his experience and photographs of his 2009 visit to Vietnam. Street spring cleaning has started. Let's go to Tom Pogue from the county's Department of Transportation for an update. Hi, I'm Tom Pogue, Community Relations Manager for the Department of Transportation. Here's an update for Montgomery County. MCDOT's highway maintenance crews are giving the county streets a good spring cleaning. Street sweeping on arterial roads and residential streets commenced in late March. This joint effort with the Department of Environmental Protection removes abrasives and other debris after the winter snow season. Sweeping typically collects more than 3,000 tons of road debris each year that would otherwise be washed into our streams. Dedicated volunteers also help the county remove litter from roadways. About 300 groups conduct roadside cleanups under the Adopt-A-Road program. Many of these volunteers will be going out this spring, especially around Earth Day in April. Elsewhere in the county, bridge decks and drainage systems are being flushed of winter debris, road shoulders are being repaired, and crews are patching potholes and doing resurfacing projects. For more information, including sweeping schedules or to report a pothole, visit our website at montgomerycountymd.gov slash mcdot or call 311. We're working to keep you moving cleanly. 
Still to come on Cali Report this week, the prom season and drunk driving. We'll tell you what MCPS is doing to bring awareness. And we'll take you to a talent show that raised funds for scholarships. We will be right back. In our region, more than five pedestrians are injured every day, and 84 were killed in 2006. But walking can be safe if you follow these walk safe rules. Pay attention, think before you cross, and don't assume cars will stop for you. Look around in every direction before crossing. Left, look right, then left again. Cross carefully. Cross only at crosswalks or intersections. Use the walk button and wait for the walk signal. Make sure drivers see you. Be patient. Don't take risks such as running across the road in the middle of a block to catch the bus. There's another bus right behind it. Move fast to cross when it's safe, but don't run. Keep looking all around as you cross. Be visible. Make sure drivers see you. At night, carry a flashlight and wear reflective materials or bright clothing. Remember, safety is your responsibility. Cross like your life depends on it. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Lauren Avagelli. As the school prom and graduation season approaches, MCPS schools are creating powerful programs to talk about the dangers of drunk driving. And one of these programs caught the attention of U.S. Secretary of Transportation, Ray LaHood. Let's take a look. Students at Rockville High School participated in Every 15 Minutes, a program aimed at preventing drunk and distracted driving among our youth. As part of the program, students enacted and videotaped a mock drunk driving accident. We run this program because we hope to see kids make fewer bad decisions. We understand that the temptation to drink or text and drive is always there for teenagers, and we want them to understand the ramifications and hopefully make better choices. I think what makes this program special is that it's students that they know. It's someone that they see every day depicted in a car crash, and you see everyone walking around as the living dead. I think that that really affects them, and it kind of makes a difference than someone just lecturing them, telling them not to drink and drive. The Every 15 Minute program culminated with a school-wide assembly, where students watched the student-produced mock accident video and listened to letters written by students involved in the mock accident. Most people, I think it really hit them. There were a lot of people crying. I mean, obviously it's fake, but it still represented something really meaningful. Today I read a letter to my parents and my brother describing what I've done in this pretend situation where I was a drunk driver. I'm sorry that I took such, a, such wonderful human beings from this earth at such a young age. Your brother, son, and friend, Ryan Hoffman. Even though it is pretend for people to have this experience and see what goes on, I think that it can really help save lives. U.S. Secretary of Transportation Ray LaHood also spoke at the assembly, touting Rockville High School's every 15 minute program as a national model. LaHood also discussed the perils of drunk driving, as well as the dangers of using electronic devices while behind the wheel. Buckle up and put this in the glove compartment so you're not tempted. If we do this, we will save lots of lives and lots of injuries. The walls of Montgomery College's Theater Arts Arena in Rockville were lively as students took the stage. Out of about 130 acts, 13 made the finals. The best part of this event is that all the proceeds raised went to a scholarship fund for the talent show winners.
What I love about college, and I tell people this all the time, it's not just about what we do in the classroom, it's what we do outside of the classroom. So having students have the opportunity to organize an event, to publicize an event, to sit down and think through every detail of what that event is going to be and execute it, and then when they get done, assess it, that's all a part of the learning experience. So for me, as a, as a, as a teacher at heart, as a person who's a president of the college, I'm delighted. It is absolutely wonderful. And they did this all by themselves, so I'm impressed. I think it's a lot of fun to see such varied performers and to know that this is from our students. I am totally amazed at all of the students and families who've come out to support them. This is the first time we've done it, and anytime you do something for a first time, you just never know. And I know the students have been working hard. At the end of last semester, they came to me to say they wanted to do something like this and wanted ideas about how they should go around doing it, and I am so blown away by what they've accomplished tonight. Very proud of them all. It's absolutely phenomenal. I mean, the great job that they've put on and being able to uh, bring out the people, bring out sponsors, uh, and all of the support for the great talent that's here at Montgomery College. It's just a tremendous event. I'm truly impressed. I just wanted to say congratulations to them. Keep up the great work. You know, they are the reason why uh, Montgomery College is a great institution, one of the best community colleges in the nation. And, it's, and you've seen some of that example tonight. You know, it's, it's just reflective of the great talent that Montgomery College has and its staff and faculty, including Dr. Pollard leading the way. You know, this is just a shining example of what many other community colleges want to emulate. And now we get to meet our pet of the week with Kathy Stanhope from the Humane Society. Hi, this is Kathy Stanhope with your pet of the week at the Montgomery County Humane Society. And I am here with Piper. Piper is an absolute sweetheart. She is a wiggle worm. She is just a bundle of energy. She is about a two-year-old pit bull mix. She's black with a few white markings. And I'm not even sure that there's some pit bull in there. I don't know, but she's very sweet. Her tail is wagging constantly. She unfortunately was given up when her previous owner had to move. And she's just lots of fun. All she wants to do is give kisses and get hugs. She just has endless energy. And if you're looking for an exercise companion, this is the dog for you. She wants to go out and run. She wants to go out and play. She's not a good dog to let off leash right now, and she does need some obedience training. She's not very well behaved in terms of the, the wiggling and the jumping, but with a little work and a little love, she will turn into an absolutely wonderful pet and a wonderful family companion. She seems to be great with a lot of kids and people. Not too sure how she is with cats, but I can't imagine that there would be a problem because, like I said, she's just a love sponge. She just wants to love everybody and know she likes giving kisses. She really is an absolutely wonderful, sweet, sweet dog. So come on down to the Montgomery County Humane Society in Rockville or give us a call at 240-773-5967 or you can visit us on the web at mchumane.org. Come on down and meet Piper or another dog just like her and you might go home with your new very best friend and you will be so pleased you do. Coming up, we will celebrate with the region's number one high school football team. And we'll tell you where to see those beautiful cherry trees without leaving Montgomery County. There's a place not so far away, a place where you don't have to keep the volume down. You'll find all sorts of creatures in this place without have to. The silly you, the proud you, you may even meet the curious it's you. Tickling me. You! 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 Ask your parents to take you to this not so far away place. Come to the forest, where the other you lives. But first, stop by discovertheforest.org. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Lauren Avigeli. 
The Tidal Basin is not the only place to see the cherry blossoms this time of the year. Some neighborhoods in Montgomery County have a spectacular view of the blossoms as well. If you've been to the Tidal Basin this time of the year, it is indeed a beautiful sight of delicate pink and white blossoms symbolizing the arrival of spring. The National Cherry Blossom is an annual two-week citywide event featuring art exhibits, sports, various cuisines, and performances. The cherry blossom was a gift of friendship over 100 years ago. When the first group of trees arrived in Washington in early 1910, they were inspected by the U.S. Department of Agriculture and found to be infested with several kinds of pests, some of them unknown to this country and therefore extremely dangerous. The trees had to be burned, and to avoid a diplomatic incident, regrets were sent to the Japanese people. In 1912, Japan gave it another try and sent replacement trees of which the first two were planted at the Tidal Basin by First Lady Helen Taft and the wife of the Japanese ambassador. Until this day, we continue to celebrate the treasure we have here in the nation's capital. The Tidal Basin is not the only place to see the cherry blossoms. We have a spectacular view right here in Montgomery County. Pete Johnson tells us more. My, I live in the uh, neighborhood of Charred Oaks, and uh, in the 60s when they developed our neighborhood, he, the developer put one to two cherry blossoms in front of each person's house. And uh, they're all pink. They're kind of getting in the later years at this point. So every time we have a winter like last winter, we lose a few or at least a couple branches. Oh, I just think it's great that we have this treasure right here so close to Montgomery County that we can come down. And now we go to Brookside Gardens to continue celebrating nature. Hi, I'm Kathy Stevens, horticulturist here at Brookside Gardens Indoor Conservatory. And I'm going to talk to you about a few plants that are uh, low maintenance and really durable that you can grow in your home yourself. One of my favorite groups of plants is begonias. You can see this one here has a very furry textured stem and flowers. Very easy to grow, tolerant of low light, tolerant of irregular watering. Um, with flowers on and off throughout the year, a great group of plants. Another large group of plants that are great to grow indoors are bromeliads. These are related to pineapples. This variety has some tooth on the edge of the leaf, but there are varieties that are smooth leaf, like this neoregelia here. And you got the addition of these awesome colorful bracts that last for months. These plants are, again, tolerant of low light, tolerant of drying out, very durable and tough plants. Another group that's great to grow are anthuriums, the peacock flower. Sh glossy flowers, glossy leaves, again, tolerant of low light, low moisture, easy and durable. These are all great plants to grow indoors. Members of the Good Council High School football team were recognized for their designation as the Washington region's number one team. The proclamation was given by Council Member Nancy Navarro. We spoke to some players about what made this season so outstanding. It's never too late to uh, accept some congratulations. And, uh, and like Vince said, you know, it, uh, by Christmas it was kind of all over with. And, and now here in, in April, you know, it's, 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 it's nice to, to still bring it back up. It, it's really nice, and especially this late in the, in the season. I mean, kind of all the awards dinners and all the individual honors and team honors are kind of over. And I don't think any of us are really ready for it to be over. It's kind of still surreal that our high school career has come to an end. So to get this honor today, I mean, it means a lot, and it's kind of something else that we can hang on to from a high school career. Congratulations again. And that does it for County Report this week. Join us at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Lorna Virgili, and thank you for watching. Beginning with fall semester registration on April 25th, MC students will only be able to sign up for classes online through MyMC. 
For assistance and information, stop by the Admissions and Records Office online or on any of our three campuses. Registration for summer semester non-credit classes at MC has just begun, so there's still time to sign up for the class you want when you want it. Check out the schedule and you can register online anytime, 24 hours a day. Tracy Mathias, the director of MC's Educational Opportunity Center, was awarded the Fannie Lou Hamer Commitment to Excellence Award in Education for helping low-income adults enroll in college. Without the efforts of Mathias and MC's EOC program, many of these adults would not have even tried to enter college. For more information about the endless possibilities at your community college, visit our website.